And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're talking about Papillon, a game about butterflies and flowers. And I don't really like to have insects all over the place, but butterflies... I'll make an exception for. They're certainly pretty, and this game definitely is trying to uh, have you build those beautiful gardens by attracting butterflies to it. It has some really amazing uh, components inside. Here's how it plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a gardener here and some butterflies of their color. These butterflies are in little clothespins here. And you're going to have a whole big bag of tiles. These tiles are going to be placed out here on this grid. Each round of the game, you're going to be placing 10 tiles out there. There's a bunch of gnomes down here to keep track of the rounds. And each round, you'll take one gnome and place it there. In each round of the game, players are going to take their gardener, starting with the person on number one, and basically bidding. You're going to be using these caterpillars here as currency. So you could bid zero, which means you might pick last. But if someone else bids zero, they push you back like this. However, the farther back you get pushed, the more of these caterpillars you'll get. Once everyone is done placing them out here, pink would pay two caterpillars and go first. Green would pick one and go f pay one caterpillar and go first. Uh, white would get a caterpillar and blue would get two caterpillars. Of course, you could always pay five caterpillars and know you're going first. Once the turn order is established, when it's your turn, you can take an entire column or, well, a row or a column. So the next person might take these two. The next person decides to take this row, which means they also get the gnome. You turn the gnome over, and that's how many caterpillars you get. Yay! Now, if you, when you're taking a row or column, only get one tile, then you'll reach in a bag and get a random one, too. You always get at least two tiles. Now, the first tile you get, you simply put in front of you. After that, you're going to be attaching tiles together, trying to form and finish different areas. Here I finish a blue group of flowers, so I'm going to get to put a butterfly on that and send that butterfly out. Now I'm showing a blue butterfly here because I'm the blue player, but if I had a pink butter, if I was a pink player, I'd put that there. You're also trying to, if possible, close in enclosed areas that have butterflies because those will give you points at the end of the game. So as the game goes by, your whole thing can look pretty neat like this. Now, at the end of each round, you're going to take the butterflies that you placed that round for finishing groups of flowers and send them out. If it's a group of two, then you're just going to send out one butterfly. If it's a group of three or more, you will get a bonus tile if there's any left for that color. So, and that will make, that will give you an extra butterfly. There are various flowers here on the board. Each of these flowers at the beginning of the game is put on top of some random points. And so I had one on a blue. I could decide to put it on this one here. And I just clip it and attach it somewhere onto that blue butterfly. And the red one I might attach. I get to put out two of them. So I'll put them over here on this one. At the end of the game, after all eight rounds, you're going to look at each flower, and whoever has the most butterflies on it will get that many points. Second most butterflies, third most butterflies. Also, at the end of the game, you're going to score enclosed areas that you have in your garden, getting one point for each butterfly. Each caterpillar you left over is worth a point. And the largest patches of flowers that you have completely finished are going to score you two points for each of those tiles. Whoever has the most points, or in this case, it's, they're called nectar, whoever has the most nectar is the winner of the game. Interesting thing about the components here, I both like them, but I have a few problems with them. There's a nice little scoring pad here that comes with the game. The box is really big, and that's because you're putting these flowers in it once you put them together. Now, the problem with these flowers is, well, this one here is pretty, pretty sturdy, but they're not all that way. 
you can see it fell off there. Not a big deal, right? But as you put this in here, this one doesn't even stand up in here. I'm going to have to lay it down to fit in, in here. So I'm going to glue these into place because I don't want them falling apart all the time. More problematically, these are really cool, these butterflies here. The different ones, they're, they're different shapes and things. Um, but you got to be careful where they are on the table because it's possible that if you're not looking at it from the right direction, you might not notice that someone else has a butterfly on that particular flower. That and I have a lot of fixing to do here with butterflies that have fallen off of their clothespins. I'm going to have to glue them back on. Not at the end of the world, but uh, there's more than a couple here that have fallen off since my last player during the different plays. The tiles themselves are fine. The bag here is fantastic, easy to fit your hand in, and that looks really pretty. I like how this board looks. Everything is a really well designed and looking. I just think that it's it's a little well, it's almost too nice in some ways, and it's not as functional as I would prefer. But man, it's certainly going to attract people to the table. Okay, so this is a game that is going to visually attract people. Big flowers, putting butterflies on them. So what is it, though? Well, it's an area control game to some degree. You're putting these flowers on. It's also a tile laying game. You're building groups of flowers in front of you. It's also kind of a bidding game as you try to win the different tiles to put in front of you. So it's a mishmash of different things and I think it works well. You have various strategies that you can try to do. First you're going to collect tiles. Which tiles do you want? How much do you want to bid for them with these worms or do you want to collect a bunch of worms so maybe later on when there's, oh I want that group of four tiles. That's awesome. Uh, although I sometimes bid first and have taken a group of three tiles just because they're the ones that I want. And you can't discount, you know, at the end of the game you certainly get a lot of points for controlling the flowers. You certainly want to get that. But putting a few butterflies in a bunch of flowers and getting second or third place on them can be pretty handy. And this game, ties are friendly. So if you tie someone, you both get the points. So that's good. But then if you build big groups of open spaces with several butterflies, that can be the tipping point to winning. And even having a really big, uh, you know, red garden here, you know, it's six tiles. Six times two is 12. That's nothing to scoff at either. And I like that. Really, my only complaints about the game is the fact that, like I said, sometimes when you turn to stuff, you can't see the butterflies on it. And I would have preferred that the butterflies not fall off the clips that they are. But that I can fix. And honestly, I'll put up with a little bit of that butterfly problem just to have people stop by the table and go, what is this game? Because it's neat. And the theme of the butterflies comes through. It's, it's even though the mechanisms of the game are fairly common. I've seen these kind of things before. Some of it not the same where you could take a whole row or column. That's kind of interesting. The way it's put together I think not only works a little bit thematically like hey we, we do have butterflies, we do have flowers, but it also is pretty simple and the game's not that long. It's about an hour and this is the kind of theme that I think is something that's going to attract more people to gaming than not. Not just the, the nice cover here but the nice game itself and so while the game is probably bigger you know, the amount of stuff that's there, the pieces and stuff, bigger than the actual game. It's still one that I enjoy playing. Papillon, check it out. Dice Tower of Judgment, approved! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.